What life would be like when I'm older But now I'll sit at home and mumble About the way things used to be I used to think that time could change me And all I had to do was sit and wait Well now I don't spend much time waiting I'm still always running late Time won't change me Unless I change me In the time it takes for change I used to dream about tomorrow And I would find my comfort there But when that hope would turn to sorrow fault was only mine to bear All I have are fleeting moments And some fading memories Well time is now or time is nothing Nothing ain't as bad as it seems Time won't change me unless I change me Time it takes for change No time won't change me Unless I change me In the time it takes for change One day I know I will be better One day when time has nothing left to prove One time of day the light will stay And shine upon your window pane that light will shine for only you Time ain't nothing but a feeling A feeling that never goes away The time goes by no matter how I try To make the good time stay Time won't change me unless I change me Time it takes for change No time won't change me Unless I change me In the time it takes for change No time won't change me Unless I change me In the time it takes for change Welcome to our Fox and Robin recording. Uh, today we have an artist spotlight that we're going to do uh, here with Charlie Stevens. And you just heard him, maybe, depending on how this video goes, uh, heard him play a song on his guitar here. So um, I'm going to let him introduce himself and kind of what he actually does. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for having me. So yeah, my name's Charlie Stevens. I'm a musician based in Fort Collins, Colorado. I uh, teach lessons in a private studio in Fort Collins in person. I also do online lessons um, and I play in a couple of different bands. I have a bluegrass project called the Charlie Stevens Band and I also play in a funk band called Titanic and I have several duo partners that I do kind of smaller scale gigs with uh, for fun here and there across the front range as well. Um, which is, I think, how I met you uh, in a, I at, believe a, so. at Grossenbart, right, in Longmont. I believe so. Yeah, so. I believe it was... Uh... I don't know if it was a duo thing that you were doing, but you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was, uh, I think it was for the Music First event where we had uh, the Nalani effect and Yeah, I believe Reggie that Wooten you were the MC and, uh, for that night. Yeah. Um, interviewer type person. Yeah. Um, that was a fun night. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, it's a great community around here. I'm excited to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. We've had a busy summer with both the bands that I'm in have been... Uh, gigging several times every weekend for the pretty much the whole summer so things are starting to slow down now and i'm starting to focus on more creative aspects of songwriting and things like that right on. you've had any like feel like the effect of all of the pandemic and everything is kind of going away playing live or is it kind of 
Is it kind of staying the same? Oh, interesting. I don't know. Um... It's really hard hard to say. I feel like, you know, obviously everything went away for a while right. there. And then I feel like it came back really strong. People were really, like, dying to get out and see music directly after. Okay. So I feel like we did notice, like, a spike in it at the local levels and stuff like that. And, yeah, maybe it's kind of more or less stabilized again now. I don't know. It's a good question. I'll have to think okay. about that. Yeah, it's, but I kind of feel the same way where it's like things have kind of not come back what they were, but they've stabilized. It's yeah. People are wanting to see shows again. Which yeah. Is, very handy. Um, so kind of to get back to you playing guitar here uh, and being a musician, what inspires you to maybe write new songs or or just play in general? Oh, boy. Um, well, to play in general, I don't know. It's just sort of a lifelong thing I've, I've had since I was about 12 years old. Okay. I had a guitar teacher named Andy Buzzy. Shout out to Andy if he's watching. And... Uh, he did lessons with me for a very short time, but he kind of opened my eyes to how I could teach myself about the guitar, and also I uh, always kind of felt like part of my calling was working with, with kids. I had a lot of younger cousins and a younger sister growing up, so I was always that always kind of came naturally to me, and I realized that this teacher was really impactful on my life, and I always wanted to be that for somebody else. I always wanted to write my own songs and perform, but also uh, be a teacher, and that kind of gave me... Uh, a path and I've really never looked back. I've, I've okay. had some temporary doubts about doing something else uh, momentarily, but really, really no. Really, I've been kind of committed to that and that's been kind of fueling the inspiration ever since. Now, when it comes to writing songs, um, it could be anything. I'm, I try to stay open-minded to writing different songs that are not just through my perspective and, and could be inspired by anything, I guess. Um, but it seems the most common thing is when I'm dealing with something in my life and uh, it gives me an outlet to kind of communicate some of those feelings to myself and, okay. and put them down. And, and that tends to be the main, like when I get obsessed with a song and I just got to get it out, it's usually because I'm like kind of in a place like that, but not always. Right. Yeah. Right. And that kind of fuels your creative process and like how you're going to write a song because mm -hmm. you're just wanting to put more like, take all that emotion, just shove it into uh, something that can maybe be an outlet. Yeah, exactly. It, it forces you to clarify your thoughts, too, because if you can't right. say it in a three-minute song, you know, it, it forces you to eliminate all the superfluous stuff mm -hmm. and really focus on what you're trying to say, and that can clarify it for you and go, oh, this is actually how I feel about this whole thing, you know? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, um, I try to write things that are really important to me, and uh, hopefully those are things that we all experience and, and maybe people, other people just haven't put into words. But I try not to go, oh, what would, what kind of song do people want to hear? That doesn't right. really work for me. It's the things that I'm really inspired to write are the ones that people tell me, hey, that really connected with me. And even with myself, at different points in my life, I'll listen to my old songs and it will be about a totally different situation that's relevant to to right. where I am now, and I'll go, wow, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, so I like to keep them kind of vague so they can be useful for more people and more situations, but right. uh, ultimately they're they're usually inspired by my life. Okay. Cool, my, uh, my notes are wigging out here. Um, yeah, all of this is kind of just stuff that I thought we'd talk about here, and I have notes on my phone here that kind of tells me, but we kind of hit like – everything that I was like thinking about oh, okay. without actually having to think about it. Oh, that's cool. It's just kind of fun. Um, but you probably have some influences that also kind of help you when you want to write a song. You're like, I have this feeling I want to write about it, but I, I need to find, you've got something that kind of helps you put it in the range that you want to do it in. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so it's kind of tricky because sometimes you don't know what kind of song you're going to write. Right. And I try not to just like, dismiss those because they're in a style that I don't want to write in or something. I try to just let it come out the way right. that it does. But often it is helpful to have parameters to it and say, I'm going to write a bluegrass song, you okay. know. And uh, so one of my influences is Tony Rice. And uh, oh, nice. recently I've been listening to his record, Tony Rice Plays and Sings Bluegrass a lot. And man, every single one of those songs is kind of like similar at the end of the day. It's just like a, a story of heartbreak put to like, awesome guitar solos and right. stuff um and so it it, it definitely kind of gives you an outlet for for that and i've listened to so much of that stuff that that just 
kind of is starting to be a little bit more natural to kind of package it in that kind of right. way, you know. That's a style of music that definitely has more of that something like that happening a lot of bluegrass is heartbreak or well there's some of it that's also storytelling that's like yeah it's a story of whatever the galveston flood is like the one song on the record by tony that i'm talking about that is like a story the rest right. of them are, are are kind of more more similar in in other ways um but yeah totally so i try to stay open-minded to, to songwriting sometimes i'll give myself prompt and i'll i'll try to write from not my perspective from a third perspective or or something like that and i think that's important to do too but those aren't really the ones that i'm ultimately inspired as much to do it's usually coming from a place that's really almost uncomfortably like real for me sometimes i write stuff and i go man i can't write this everybody's gonna like know what i'm going through right now right. and i have to kind of let that go and go whatever maybe they won't and then like two years later you're not even going through it anymore so it's like you don't even care so right. why should i care while i'm putting yeah, it to you, page? Could, you could be past it and people are like, this is a great song but yeah you also have a little bit of more emotion behind it than than some might um when they hear it you know because every it seems like every time i listen to someone's song yours or whoever else it might be there's always like something that comes out of me as well mm -hmm. so which is great about music. oh ex oh exactly and that's what music really is right it's like this uh art in general is like this need to try to explain the human experience and a lot of that stuff can't really be put into words right. and uh and when it can pairing it with music can kind of cut bring you to an emotional level of that and have it be more impactful um so yeah that's really what i'm hoping for is that my experiences are really going to strike a chord with other people who've felt probably that same way and maybe right. didn't know how to say that or didn't realize they felt that way until they heard that song or, or something you know um but one more thing i wanted to mention uh i was saying how you know i would write something i have to let go of some hang-ups and just get it down right. ultimately that was the number one helpful thing in in songwriting for me when i first started writing songs i would wear my editing hat at the same time and now i try not to do that so if it, i would get like half a page in and i would read it back and i go oh man these lyrics are so terrible this is right. embarrassing i crumple it up and i was like 14 at the time so they probably were god awful right oh yeah but what i've learned over the years even if that's like bad just keep going get the full page then right. like the next day you can go okay well this first paragraph was terrible but without that i never would have thought of this this part's actually good now let me get rid of this one let me tweak this right. and if i just threw it away after the first paragraph i never would have gotten to any of that other stuff so right. i think my advice to anybody writing songs is try to let go of some of those hang-ups and just get the song out and there is another time to wear a different hat and, and view it from a different mentality and then you can kind of trim the fat and, and things like that and that's that's an important thing to do as well but try not to do that at the same time if, if if you're inspired to write something don't really worry if it's good or bad or if it's too personal or or too country or too uh whatever just get it down right and yeah they say country music is three chords in the truth right so the more that you can kind of just right. even if it's uncomfortable the more that you can like say what's on your mind and, and it's right. coming from a real place i think that's that's cool you know yeah do you, do you give some uh, time when you're doing that? Like, I've written all this, now I'm going to let it sit for a week or whatever and then come back to it and do that kind of editing process or um next day or whatever it might be? Usually I kind of obsess with obsess over it until it's done. Okay. Yeah, like I'll, I, I wrote a song recently in about an hour. I was on a drive home from Denver, so I had that whole drive and playing with it. And then I got home, picked up the guitar, and kind of finished it in maybe another half hour or right. something like that. Okay. And yeah, I'll go back and maybe tweak things. In this case, I don't think I really felt I needed to. I felt like it was done. Right. And then other times I'll get into it and it will and it won't be finished for like years. I'll play it occasionally and I just won't be able to get past a certain lyric and then one day I just will, just right? So, clicks. yeah, I have a pretty disorganized process, honestly. I know songwriters <laughs> that, that will show up and they'll schedule time to do that. And, and that's been sort of stifling for my creativity. So right. usually I wait until I'm like, I got to say this thing and I'll just stay in that as right. long as I can until I get it done. No, I feel the same way. That's kind of why I have a space like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, You need that time. Like, oh, yeah, here it comes. I need to go do it now. Otherwise, I might forget it. Totally. Um and that's that's part about being a, a songwriter, I guess. Um, so you you play bluegrass, and and I also know you're you're in a like a funk band. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of 
switch from that genre. They're two, t- they're two separate genres by by a lot, actually. Yeah. So how do you kind of switch between those two genres? Oh, good question. Um, well, so I I am newer to bluegrass than I am to funk, really. Where I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, we had a strong yeah. funk community there we could go to the jams and and play that stuff in my uh first band carbonated insight was a jam band but we were influenced by funk and a lot of the tunes that i would write for that band were very funk oriented and stuff so i had somewhat of a background in that i really love the role that the rhythm guitar does right um i'm also a guitar teacher so i have to learn all sorts of stuff people come right. in with all sorts of different oh, instruments and we do deep dives into styles and different players and and learn all that so i'm pretty used to shifting gears stylistically already right. okay. i also studied classical guitar in school and bluegrass i i've dabbled in a ton of jazz so you know i uh i'm pretty used to playing different styles i guess when i first started playing in the funk band at this point i was playing mostly bluegrass for a few years up to that and it definitely was a little weird getting back to electric because i'm wanting to do certain phrasing licks that that come naturally and uh that don't really work you know so it took a little bit of an adjustment to get back into that funk mindset and uh occasionally when i'm soloing i'm i'm still looking for a better ways to express myself because soloing in funk is not necessarily a stylistic thing a lot of players especially horn players and stuff will draw on jazz vocabulary a lot of funk guitarists will draw from rock vocabulary and do these really kind of shreddy kind of moments okay. and stuff so there almost isn't really like a blue point and then uh, a guy i would mention is maybe like eric krasno of lettuce i think he's he does a really great job of doing both those things will kind of shred a little bit but it's more tasteful phrasing that's influenced by jazz vocabulary okay. and stuff like that so i think that um that's kind of what i'm striving for um but because there's not necessarily like stylistically correct or incorrect ways to do that it is a little bit open-ended and you can have a lot of fun with it you okay know? yeah that's that's also kind of interesting to hear like how those different things can um, it'd be kind of interesting to see if you could take those two things and put them together, bluegrass and funk. But well, they definitely, I definitely do a little bit. But like you were saying, they're pretty different. And honestly, yeah. that's why I love that I'm in two different bands for them because I can stretch bluegrass to certain places, right. I can stretch funk to certain places. But at the end of the day, they're they're very different. The mm-hmm. the main difference is yeah. their instrumentation oh, and absolutely. the roles of all the instruments. So to really, you know, fulfill that scratch that itch to play those styles i really do need separate bands separate um, bands separate instruments or guitars almost because yes yeah, so i play telecaster in the funk band to play the martin then i played uh for you today in, right. the, in the bluegrass band so uh yeah very different instruments but i'm of the mind that all guitars are pretty much the same thing like you know it's a little bit of an of oversimplification course. a lot of my students ask me about this and a lot of times i say acoustic versus electric it's like driving a car versus driving a truck of course there's a ton of differences but you don't need a different driver's oh, license if yeah. you can drive one you can drive the other right, right? The same amount of strings you know totally yeah. totally um so yeah it's really fun i really like to have different kind of outlets to be able to do different things that maybe aren't appropriate in in bluegrass or aren't appropriate in funk you know right. Just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the guitar is an amazing instrument. It's so versatile and it's present in so many different styles of music, and that's not oh, true. Right. People who play the mandolin, they play a lot of Bill Monroe stuff, and you know, there's there's David Grisman, obviously. There's 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 things to branch out into the right. nerdy mandolin world and discover all these great players. But for the most part, they're they're in certain uh, niches more so than than guitar players which are in every style of music oh absolutely you know they're I mean? everywhere guitar yeah. players are not a dime a dozen but they're just every style of music has it to some extent exactly it's, yeah. it's pretty incredible yeah, yeah depending you know, even some of the hip-hop stuff i've heard lately it's like there's guitar in that like i don't think that would be a thing oh yeah but, but it's there it's like okay oh uh, yeah pop absolutely. music you know and then on into obviously bluegrass and, and funk and all these other genres it's just there it, yeah so um so my my next thought is um obviously you're you're playing a lot you you know you're playing in both these bands where where can people kind of see you play these uh, like playing these bands like you guys have upcoming shows or your shows have obviously you've done out throughout the summer but yeah yeah we're ramping down we're kind of ramping down for the 
for the winter a little bit. We're going to focus on writing and recording a little bit more. Um, we do still have some shows. I'm not sure when this is going to air, so I'd send people to my website, charliestevensmusic.com. Okay. I try to stay pretty on top of that. That's kind of a bear to update, so sometimes things slip through the cracks. So please also follow me on Instagram, Charlie underscore stevens underscore music and instagram also right. charlie stevens music on facebook and i'm more active on there about letting everybody know where the shows are um but yeah we have a few in fort collins in october and um i could actually check and give you a few if you if you'd like yeah, yeah sure um i know people would want to see you guys play I've, I've seen you guys play at least in the funk well, I've seen you do the bluegrass as well as the funk band a couple times. Um, whether you knew I was there or not, it's a little bit different story. But. Uh, well, yeah, we got a busy weekend on uh, coming up in October. So on the 11th, we're going to be at the Van Cafe, which is in Fort Collins. Okay. And uh, on the 12th, we're going to be at Panhandler's Pizza in Fort Collins. And then on the 13th, I'm going to be doing a duo gig with my buddy Dave Jensen at the Regional in Fort Collins. So that's going to be a busy weekend, uh, 11th, 12th, and 13th of October. So awesome. find me on social media, and I'll I'll post about those as they get closer. Um, but, yeah, thanks for asking awesome. about that. Awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of all I've got for this particular video. It's a little shorter than I kind of anticipated, but we talked through a lot of stuff that I thought would take a little bit longer, um, which is, which is great. Um, but that's, that's kind of what I've got, you know, uh, Charlie Stevens playing acoustic in the beginning of this, which was fantastic. Um, I didn't introduce myself, but I'm Justin. And, uh, if you guys want to see more videos, uh, just get on our YouTube channel. Um, I think Charlie even has his own YouTube channel. I do. That's also Charlie Stevens music. Yeah, and I've watched many of those because there's times where I get stuck in guitar, guitar land, and I'm like, I think he's got a video about what I'm looking for, and I find out that I find things I'm not even looking for. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Oh, awesome! Um, awesome. I watch him quite a bit. Uh, if you like his, if you want to learn more guitar, check out his stuff. Uh, like and subscribe it, or whatever you guys want to do with it. Um, but that's all I got for today. So we'll see you next time, and go make some music.